Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to North Granville Community Church. And we are releasing this uh, videotaped sermon uh, for Resurrection Sunday. And so I'd like to start my sermon uh, in a way that you can respond at home. And I will have no idea if you respond or even if you know how to respond, but I'll coach you on how to respond. And that way, next year, hopefully, when we're gathering again, um, you will know how to respond if you were to be here on the uh, Sunday morning for Resurrection Sunday. So normally when we gather on a Resurrection Sunday, what we uh, say is, He is risen, and you would respond... He is risen indeed. Oh, Susie's here, so she can do it for me. So I'll allow you to respond. And maybe you can hear Susie in the background. And so, uh, but if you're at home, say it along. He has risen. He is risen indeed. So it's wonderful to have you tune in and to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus. This is why uh, we are gathered. Uh, well, when we gather, we're gathered online, uh, so to speak, today, but um, when we are able to gather, when we gather, we gather on a week, not just on uh, Easter weekend, not just for Resurrection uh, morning Sunday do we gather. We gather every single week because Jesus rose from the dead. And so today, we're going to look at specifically the scripture that talks about Jesus' resurrection because it's so important uh, last week when I preached, uh, we talked about how Jesus' resurrection gave us, gave us the hope that we too will have resurrected bodies, that our bodies will one day as well raise like Jesus from the de dead. And that was found from a scripture in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And, our, and, and really we've been working through the scriptures uh, as a church even before this time of uh, self-isolation when we were gathering here together in the book of 1 Corinthians. And you can find previous sermons on our website, on our YouTube channel about um, the book of 1 Corinthians leading up until last week where we talked about the resurrection. Um, I would typically continue in that, but because it's, uh, we're celebrating together Resurre Jesus' resurrection, and we talked about it the past few weeks in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Chapter 16 kind of starts to conclude the book, and it does not really talk about the resurrection anymore. It kind of moves on to give thanks for the community of faith, and we'll look at that next time. But this time, I want to still highlight the importance of Jesus' resurrection. So we're going to look at the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 24, and this is where it talks about Jesus rising from the dead. And so if you want to get, in, get your Bible and follow along, I, I really uh, encourage you. Um, maybe you're someone who's just tuning in on the internet and you're like, well, um, I, I like just listening or I like just watching. Um, I really encourage you to open your Bible as well because I think as believers, um, yes, the pastor who preaches and teaches can deliver the word and that you could be spiritually fed through these messages. I really believe that. But I believe that as the uh, apostles in the early church fed the church, they expected those disciples uh, of, of Jesus, who then became disciples of the early apostles, to then become uh, mature in their faith so that they could then become teachers and preachers themselves. And so the only way that you're going to grow to become not someone who just takes in a message, but someone who can also uh, learn to be able to share the message is by getting to know your word. And this is one of the best places you can start to get to know your word, is to know the Gospels, and the Gospel again is the good news of Jesus, but also the most important part of the Gospel. If you're going to start about what is Christianity all about, why am I a Christian? It's the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the most important part of our faith that you as a believer need to learn and study. And so Luke, <clears throat> Luke chapter 24 is where you can follow along with me. Open your Bible. Um, one, one way that if you're, if you're, if you're tuning in to, for, this, to the, for the first time or, or you're opening your Bible for the first time, uh, one thing I would recommend that you do is to either keep a journal nearby, or if you don't mind, um, writing even in the margins of your Bible, keep a pen nearby and, and, and write, whether it be in that journal or in your Bible, uh, any thoughts, any, 
any prayers, any um, questions that you might have for God, and, and, and mark those down, because that's really how we study God's Word together, and that's how we can learn and grow. Because today we're going to look at uh, what we would call a narrative, which is more of a, a story, right? And so the Bible can be um, instructive. It can tell us, like, the, the Paul in Corinthians, as we've been going through Corinthians, is in instructing the church on how to uh, function as a community, how to behave as a church, and, and teaching us morals and ethics and, and uh, how to follow Jesus. But here we're going to read a narrative, which is more like a story. He's going to teach us a story. And as we uh, hear the story, it's history. It's God's story for us that we can learn from. And so we can highlight the, the important things that really speak to us in this story. And the more we learn to kind of dissect the story and memorize the story, we kind of see ourselves as a part of the story. Because it's not just for your information, this, this story. It's for your transformation. It's so that God can change you. This story of Jesus rising from the dead, of defeating death, is, is a story that is told to you so that your life can be transformed. So that you yourself can understand what it means to be uh, resurrected spiritually. That God would breathe new life into your spiritual life. And we all need that, whether we're someone who is already a believer and trusts in Jesus and has had that first uh, encounter with him where he's breathed his life into us and we are spiritually reborn, born again, as uh, John chapter 3 tells us we need to be in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Or we're someone who, who whether it's the first time or we're someone who's, who's done it before in the past and we just need that, that remembrance of what it means to be born again, what it means to be resurrected. We're going to study this so that we can allow God's word to transform us and bring us closer to Jesus and that we can be more like Jesus in his death, in his resurrection, and in his life. And so that's what we're going to be doing as we read the scriptures. Luke chapter 24. I'm really excited uh, as you tune in online that as you watch this, there's a blessing that comes as you hear God's word, the Bible tells us that God's word is powerful, that it gives us faith. faith. The Bible says that faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of God. So as we hear this word, this story of Jesus um, rising from the dead, we, we allow our faith to grow as well. We allow God to give us a gift of faith, believing this story that these eyewitnesses saw 2,000 years ago. And now we get to be witnesses of their account by reading what they had put to paper. And now we can allow that to be a part of our faith, that we believe the message that, was, that they saw. And so let's read this message. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. So it's the first day of the week. It's, it's Sunday morning. Because Sunday morning is the first day of the week. This day is so important that it changed uh, worship for these Jewish believers. So you have to remember that the apostles, they were Jewish. Their Sabbath was on a Saturday. But the, the, the resurrection transformed their lives so much that the church began to shift it's worship to the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, and we gather and worship now on the Sunday because we celebrate together, we worship God together on the day of the week that he rose from the dead. See, in the Old Testament, they, they worshiped on the Saturday, on the Sabbath, the day of rest, the day that pointed back to creation when God created the earth, and then on the seventh day, he rested on the Sabbath, which is a Saturday. But we as believers, we uh, creation, yes, is important, but the most important part of our faith isn't the fact that God created, it's that he rose from the dead, because it's one thing to be created, and we all get to live this life, but it's another to not just be created, but to know that we have eternal life, not just this life, but eternal life. And the only way that we have eternal life is the fact that Jesus gave us eternal life by rising from the dead to show us that he conquered death, that he defeated death, and that he has promised to give us a, a resurrected, a post-human uh, life, 
a resurrected life for all of eternity by putting our faith and our trust that he defeated death on Resurrection Sunday. So that's why we worship on a Sunday. And uh, we see that the women took the spices that they had prepared to the tomb. See, Jesus died uh, on Good Friday. He died on the Friday. And the women are now going to the tomb several days later to anoint Jesus' body with uh, spices. It's, it's kind of like their ceremonial uh, preparation for Jesus' body because the body will uh, begin to rot, we know, after several days. And, and we don't want it to stink if people were to go to the grave site, as these women are going to do, to uh, pay their respects. And so they're going to uh, kind of uh, embalm him. And so in a way, like in our, in our modern day, we embalm people so that their bodies don't decay too quickly. But um, they're going to anoint his body they're going to uh, put spices on his body at the tomb. But verse 2 tells us this. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Now this is so important uh, for us to understand. You know, the other uh, Gospels tell us that they had placed a soldier there uh, to keep guard of the tomb. And yet here we find the tombstone rolled away. You can imagine that if you went to a loved one's, like these ladies are doing, go to a loved one's uh, gravesite and you see the gravesite disturbed, how troubling that might be. You can just imagine that in your mind, knowing uh, you're going to pay your respects, you're going to the gravesite to pay your respect to someone who they cherished deeply, they loved, um, and they see that the gravesite has been tampered with, the stone has been rolled away. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So they, they're going in and they're expecting to find Jesus' body, and it's not there. And while they were wondering this, about this, suddenly two men in, clo in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. You can already imagine them in a state of shock because of the fact that the tomb has been rolled away, Jesus' body is not there, but now they turn around and they see two men who are glowing. Two men who are glowing. Uh, this would be life-changing. This would be life-shaking. Sh you know, you, if, if you're someone who's ever had uh, encounters with any type of supernatural, I'm sure it's something that is stuck in your, life, in your mind for your entire life. And when people tell me about their dreams or their visions of anything supernatural, I know uh, when they look at me, they tell me about it with such seriousness in their eyes, and it's hard to discredit what they're saying. And uh, in this case, these women were already, as they go to the tomb, uh, probably emotional and, and wanting to see uh, their, their rabbi, their teacher, the one they loved, and they get there, they don't find his body, and they turn around, and boom! Now they know that there's something special happening. There's something supernatural that's going on. There are two men who are glowing there, and they're about to speak. And the Bible tells us uh, that they were frightened in verse 5. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you? While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. It's amazing how our minds work this way, how uh, we will forget things that we have told each other. We will... Uh, have kind of a selective memory. Remember the things we want to remember. And so Jesus, throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus predicting his own death and predicting not, along, not only his own death, but he predicts his resurrection. He predicts that he's going to be able to uh, defeat death and rise from, the, rise from the dead. And yet, the disciples, these women who uh, are about to be named in the next verse, they have all forgotten that Jesus predicted this. They are just too overcome by the crucifixion. They're too overcome by seeing their, their master, the one they loved, dead on a cross. And yet, as soon as these supernatural beings, these men who were glowing, show up and remind them and speak the words that Jesus spoke to them, their minds 
are brought back to a place where they can remember what was said by Jesus. And I think the same thing happens in in our lives, in our spiritual lives, as we're walking along. Uh, God continually speaks to us. God uh, reminds us of important and significant moments of our lives where God really shows up. But we tend to forget until somewhere down the road, in a moment of crisis, in a moment of emotional uh, disturbance, God needs to show up again, and when he shows up again, he reminds us of the most important things in life, and that is to know the words he spoke before, the words that point to his his life, his death, and his resurrection. And so if you're tuning in, I want you to remember the words that God has spoken to you that you might have forgotten in your past. The promises from the scripture that you might have first heard when you first became a believer. Maybe you've forgotten your first love for God. And you need this morning a a remembrance of the words that he's spoken to you. And so this is a wonderful opportunity. If there's never a chance to, um, to remember, it's the chance will come on the day we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. And now I want to speak to you if you're someone who has never had faith. Maybe you've heard from the Bible before, but you never responded in faith. Maybe you're someone who's tuning in for the first time, just checking out the church, checking out Christianity, checking out what it means to follow Jesus. And I'll tell you this, that just as these women remembered what Jesus had spoken into your life, I don't doubt that God has been speaking to you already, drawing you to himself, and even using him bringing you into this uh, YouTube channel so that you can respond. Because At this moment, God can use your entire life to bring you to this moment so that you can remember what he is doing in your life to bring you into faith. God loves you. He loves you so much that this message that the the angels gave to these women is the same message that he wants to give to you. That is that Jesus had to die for sinful men. He died for every sinner. And that's you and me. We are all sinners. He He was crucified, and on the third day, he rose again. And he rose again for you and me so that he could live in our lives. And he gives us his spirit once we choose to believe this message. He gives us his spirit to come in so that we can live a new spiritual life with God at the center, trusting him, following him, loving him. And you'll live a life passionate for Jesus, the man who rose from the grave. Uh, Verse 8 said, then they remembered his words. Remember the words that God has spoken into your life to bring you to this point. Verse 9, when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who had told this to the disciples. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. So in that day, unfortunately, the words of women were not uh, trustworthy in a court of law. And so we know that that ancient society of of Israel, um, women were, were put into a place where they weren't Uh, their testimony was not valued as much. But yet God still chose, God still chose to deliver this message to women. You might say, oh, I don't know if the gospel is true. I don't know if the resurrection is true. Why why should we believe the testimony of all these people? They could have made it up. Listen, if God, if, 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 if if this message isn't from God and it's from men and men chose to make it up, they would not have put the message in the mouths of women. Because they would say, oh, nobody's going to believe the women. Why should we give it to the women? Instead, it was God who chose to deliver this message. And God delivered this message to women because God wants women to be a part of his kingdom, be a part of uh, the the, 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 the witness and bringing forth a testimony of the gospel. 
And yet these men, these uh, 12 apostles, did not believe. It seemed like nonsense to them. Uh, I'm sure the women were still at this point highly emotional and, and, and surprised and, and talking about glowing men and talking about the stone being rolled away and, 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 and remembering that Jesus had predicted that he was going to rise from the dead. And they're all, I could just imagine hearing this testimony and them all being uh, in, in a frenzy over should they believe this message or not. And it says, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Verse 12 says, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw strips of linen lying lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This, I, I I think these facts of that are presented here by Luke in the gospel are so important. First of all, Peter. However, even though the other disciples weren't wanting to believe, weren't wanting to listen, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Peter wanted to believe this. He needed to check it out for himself. And I encourage you this morning uh, that if you're someone who's like that, you're like, I want to believe this. I don't know if I believe it yet, but I want to believe it. Be like Peter and run to Jesus. Run to him and say, God, I want to believe. I want to know you. And I believe just as Peter ran to the tomb and found that Jesus was not dead, I believe that you will find out that Jesus is alive and that he wants, to know, he wants you to know him. And the, the other part of this verse is, that's quite amazing is that um, Peter finds strips of linen uh, lying there by themselves. Um, you know, early Jews... Uh, said, well, clearly the, the, the Christians uh, who wanted to, uh, the followers of Jesus, who really wanted to pro- propagandize their political message, stole Jesus and made this religion by stealing Jesus. Listen, uh, how many people, would, if they're stealing a dead body, would leave the burial cloth behind? If you're stealing the body, you're taking the clothes that are on him with you. But they didn't. Why? Because the, the, the grave clothes were left there because Jesus came out of them alive. And, uh, you know, there's, there's interesting uh, things that you can look into. Now, I don't know if it's a, a historical artifact or not, but people have looked into the um, Shroud of Turin as uh, evidence that Jesus, these are the burial, burial cloths of Jesus and they still exist and and um, you can look up on YouTube videos about uh, this ancient artifact and to see if it's genuine or not. And I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but I find it quite interesting that people are so interested to see if Jesus really rose from the dead, that they're looking into antiquity to see if this is like a relic of the church that truly Jesus laid in these burial cloths and they're still around today. And the Catholic Church uh, has held on to them for centuries, uh, believing that this is true. And people have studied it with scientific uh, research to see if this was truly the burial cloth of Jesus. And I want to say whether it's true or not, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. I believe that you can know by having his spirit live inside of you. You don't need to see the burial cloths yourself. You can have an inward testimony that God has transformed your life. One of the greatest ways to know that Jesus is alive is that he lives in you through his spirit. And you can invite him to live in your heart today. For those of you who uh, attend our church and who follow Jesus, I hope that this message has just rejuvenated your faith to remember why you believe this. Jesus rose from the dead. I follow a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He lives. And you can go through trials and tribulations and even the things that our world is facing today knowing that Jesus is alive and you've put your hope and your faith not in how we're going to survive this world. You've put your hope and faith that you have a God who has defeated death. He not only survived this world, he defeated death and pointed towards eternity, an eternity that he wants to share with you. So if you're someone who has already believed I pray that your faith is being rejuvenated as you listen to this. But for those of you who have not yet believed, I challenge you to be like Peter. Run to Jesus. 
discover that he's still alive. Put your hope in him. Put your faith in him. Be born again. Allow your heart, your soul, your mind to be given over to God that you will start loving Jesus with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I'm going to pray for you, uh, for us all right now, that God would do this work in our hearts. Jesus, we thank you that you rose from the dead. We thank you for this testimony of these women who went to the gravesite and found the tomb rolled away and found these angels nearby saying, he's alive, he's risen. And Lord, we thank you that Peter, although the other disciples and Peter had doubts, they, Peter was willing to run to discover your, the tomb was empty. And Lord, if we continue to read this, we read of times where not only was the tomb empty, but you appeared to your disciples. And Lord, you appear in our lives even today. You show up. You transform us. And so I pray, Lord, for the person who is spiritually hungry this morning, the person who is, uh, wants to give their lives to you, wants to know you, Jesus, wants to run to the empty tomb to find that, that you are alive. Would you come into their lives this morning? Would they pray with us this morning for their sins to be forgiven. Lord, forgive us our sins. Come and live inside of us. Allow us to follow you. Show us that you are truly God. And transform our lives, that we would know you, you would give us a hope, not only in this life, for all of eternity. We thank you, Jesus, for that hope that resurrection power, that resurrection hope that there's more to life than just this life. There's eternal life, knowing you, God, knowing a God who loves us, a father who loves us, who sent his only son to die out of his love for us so that we could be reconciled to you, so that we can have a relationship with you, God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.